What's up, guys? Uh, back with some more Faction Focuses. We're going to be looking at the uh, Chaos Demons and then the uh, Sisters of Battle. So uh, here's the Chaos Demons. Uh, I've played Demons a time or two. I normally play like Marines, Fotan, like the good, quote, armies. But I don't know. I've always liked Demons. Thought they were pretty cool. Uh, so let's jump into... Uh, some of the rule. Oh, there's old big old Bellator. Uh, yeah, I mean, they just have some of the coolest models. Like, especially, like, Bloodthirsters, Bloodletters, like, always been a corn guy. Alright, so here's their army rule. Shadow of Chaos. If your army faction is Legion's Demonica, certain areas of the battlefield are considered to be within your army's Shadow of Chaos, as follows. Your deployment zone is always within your army's Shadow of Chaos. Uh, at the start of any phase, if you control at least half of the objective markers within No Man's Land, until the end of that phase, No Man's Land is within your army shadow of chaos. So at the start of any phase. All right, start of any phase till the end of that phase. All right, so if you get on it in the movement phase, then in the shooting phase, it'll still be in your control if you consolidate onto an objective in the... Uh, fight phase, then going into your opponent's command phase, and into your opponent's movement phase, and basically till the end of your opponent's movement phase, it'll be in the shadows of chaos. Alright, so we'll see what that does, but the start of any phase is control at least half of the objective markers within your opponent's deployment zone, until the end of that phase, your opponent's deployment zone is within your army's shadow of chaos. Alright. Alright. While I leave here, demonic and Manifestation. While a Legion's Demonica unit from your army is within your army's Shadow of Chaos, each time that unit takes a Battle Shock test, add one to that test, and if that test is passed, one model in that unit regains up to D3 lost wounds. If that unit is a Battle Line unit and that test is passed, up to D3 destroyed models can be returned to that unit instead. Alright. One model in that unit against D3 lost wounds, but if they're Battle Line, you can possibly bring models back. All right, so then Army Shadow of Chaos, the unit takes Battle Shock test. Add one of the tests, and if it's passed. All right, so this will basically be in your command phase. So anything in your deployment zone will always be able to do this in your command phase. And depending on whether or not your opponent regains the middle of the board from you on their turn, will determine if No Man's Land lets you do this. All right, well, an enemy unit is within your Army Shadow of Chaos. Each time that unit takes a Battle Shock test, Subtract one from the test, and if that test is failed, that enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. All right, that's really nice, because you can push up, take the middle in your movement phase, uh, or possibly their deployment zone, You know, take their objectives, depending on how your game's going and how late in the game it is. Uh, do your damage to them, get stuff below half strength, and then neg one to battle shocks, and not only do they, if they fail, not only do they lose objective control, can't use stratagems. Uh, if they fall back, they're taking damage, but they're also going to take an additional D3 mortals. All right. That's not like game breaking. I'm going to like Alpha Strike table you, but that like, if you play it well in your position, subtly over game whittles your opponent down. So at the end, they could be missing another unit or two. So, I mean, that's solid. That's okay. Uh, we'll see if any, what else triggers off this rule, but. From what it is right here, that's that's okay, decent. Not it's not crap, but it's not like the strongest thing ever, depending on how the game plays out. Uh, all right, and then uh, detachment rule, warp rifts. Each time a legion demonic unit from your army is set up on the battlefield using deep strike ability, if it is set up wholly within your army's shadow of chaos, and you set up anywhere that more. Is more than six inches horizontally away from all in mile instead of more than three. Or instead of more than nine. So you gain three inches on your deep strikes, which would be great in your deployment zones. You can always do it in your deployment zone. I mean, it, technically, you could drop right on the line in your deployment zone. If someone, say, just outside your deployment zone, say seven inches, you can drop right there, boom. Right on the edge of your deployment zone within, you know, as long as you're more than six away. And then... Late game, because 
we'll see how they change it. But so far, we haven't seen anything saying you have to bring reserves in by turn three. So you could hold reserves till turn four, turn five, and possibly have the shadow in the middle coming into your turn or their deployment zone even. All right, so that, when you pull it off, will be huge, and you can always do it in your deployment zone. But And you can always do it right on the line of your deployment zone, which could possibly give you a good shot into the middle. Um, all right, that's not bad. So yeah, that's and that's keying off your uh, shadow. So that's pretty solid because demons have a lot of deep strike. So you should be able to use that once or twice a game. Get to use the six inch at least. Uh, another army roll. Was this it? So chaos demon army roll. This is just another chaos demon army roll. All right. So they have two army rolls. Uh, if every model from your army has the chaos keyword, you can include... Oh, this is a uh, let you take reserve uh, support from them. From your army, even if you don't have the faction keyword selected, select the army set. The combined point cost of such units include depends on their battle size as shown below. Sorry to normal strike force, which most competitively is, you can add up to 500 points of de uh, demons to any chaos army. Uh, none of these models can be your warlord, and they cannot be given enhancements in addition. World, world leaders can only take corn. Thousand Sons can only take Siege. Death Guard can only take Nurgle. Uh, if Lucius the Eternal, you can only take Slanesh. All right, so you can take Emperor's Children if Lucius isn't your warlord and take other types of demons. That's interesting that these three are restricted solely by taking that chapter. This one is not. Possibly because Thousand or not Thousand Sons. Emperor's Children don't have their own book. And I don't know if they plan on giving them one of the uh, four dedicated to a specific god. They're the only one who don't have their own book. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure they don't. All right. That's interesting. I mean, that's nice. You can add demons to anything, and it's uh, up to 500 points. So basically, 25% of your list can be demons. All right. Oh, and here they're giving us a Keeper of Secrets. 14-inch move, always been fast. That's still solid. Uh, toughness 10, 5-up save, 18 wounds, leadership 6, objection control 5. All right, that's a pretty solid stat line to start off with. Uh, range weapons, living whip is assault, so you can advance it. So 14 plus D6, and then still... So that's a good threat range on that. Uh, 6 attacks, hits on 2, strength 6, and I want 2 damage. All right, solid. Phantasmagoria, a witch fire, so this is a psychic power. Devastating wound psychic, 18 inch range, 6 attacks, 2 up to hit, strength 6, neck 2, 1 damage. Or you can focus this, focus it, so still devastating wounds, and gains hazardous and psychic. Uh, so it's 18 shots, strength 9, or 9 attacks, 18 inch range, 9 attacks, hits on 2, strength 6, neck 2, 1 damage. Alright, so it's always devastating wounds, so six is to do uh, mortals. Six is to wound do mortals. So you basically get hazardous for three extra shots. I mean, but after you shoot it, you only roll one dice, and on a six, you take three mortals, and he's at eight. So maybe you do that to get three extra shots. Uh, but yeah, we'll, normally when something becomes hazardous, you get like. Extra AP or extra damage or something, but no extra strength. But no, it's just three extra shots. So that's interesting. Uh, melee weapon, uh, ritual knife, extra attacks. So he will get to swing this in addition to whatever weapon he chooses. So basically, it's just three extra attacks, hitting on two, strength six, neck two, two damage. Uh, then he's got snapping claws. Oh, devastating wounds and extra attacks. So he gets to swing all three of these weapons every time. Uh, so six is to wound will do mortals and he's an extra attack. Uh, four attacks, hitting on two, strength six, make two, three damage. Then the wit stealer sword, uh, six attacks, hits on two, strength eight, make two, three damage. So six and so thirteen attacks, all hit on twos. Uh, nothing below strength six, six of its strength eight, all are neg two. One is two damage, and then ten are at three damage. All right, so the Keeper of Secrets is going to slow. Uh, blows up, 
six inches for D6, has the deep strike ability. Uh, if you can pull that off in your shadows, just drop six inches away, chart, like, that's a nice shadow of chaos. Demon Lord of Slanesh Aura. While a friendly Slanesh Legion's demonic unit is within six inches of this model, prove the armor penetration of melee weapons in that unit by one. Uh, so he should have that Slanesh and Legion demonic. Yeah, so all his weapons. Also, all of these weapons aren't AP2. They're going to be AP3 because he'll always be in range of himself. All right, so that's really good. A mesmerizing form. Each time attack targets this model, subtract one from the hit roll, and he's neg one to hit. Uh, War Gear, Shining Aegis. He has a field no pain, five up. All right, so neg one to hit, 18 wounds, T10, five up field no pain. All right, so he's not going to be easy to kill. And when he gets to six wounds or below, he's just minus one hit. And he's got involved four up. All right, so depending on their points, Keeper Secrets looking really good. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, oh, and Bellacorp. All right, movement 12, toughness 10, 4-up save, 18 wounds, leadership 6, objective control 5. Uh, betraying Shade is a witch fire, devastating wounds, ignores cover psychic. So 18-inch range, 9 attacks, hits on 2, strength 5, neg 2, 1 damage, 6 is the wound. We'll be doing mortals instead. Uh, betraying Shade's focused. Uh, just gains hazardous, still devastating, ignores covered psychic, 18 inch range, 12 attacks, 2 up to hit, strength 6, neg 3, 1 damage. Alright, so you see here, he gains 3 attacks, 1 strength, and 1 AP for gaining hazardous. That's more what I would expect for going up to hazardous. I didn't gain damage though, but that's decent. Uh, melee weapons, Blade of Shadows, Strike, Lethal Hits, so uh, 6 to hit will auto wound. Uh, 6 attacks, hitting on 2, Strength 14, Neg 4, D6 plus 1. Alright, that's pretty solid profile. Blade of Shadows Sweep, 14 attacks, hits on 2, Strength 8, Neg 3, 1 damage. Alright, so that's just 14 attacks into little guys. Uh, Alright, not quite as impressive as the Keeper Secrets, but not bad. Uh, let's see, Deadly Demos D6, Deep Strike Stealth. Alright, so he's going to be Neg 1 to hit at all times. Uh, outside of 12, maybe? I can't remember exactly how stealth is worded. It might just be outside of 12, or it might be all the time. Uh, Shadows of Chaos, Dark Master. The area of the battlefield within 6 inches of miles considered to be within your army's Shadow of Chaos. Oh, so you just jump him up to the middle, end of your reserves, drop stuff within 6 inches of him, or drop something... Yeah, anything within six inches of him can be within six inches of the enemy. So you jump him up, you bring in some blood letters. You bring in that keeper's secrets. I like that's really strong. I like that a lot. Uh, shadow form at the start of the battle round, select one shadow form ability. See so left until the end of the battle round. This model has that ability. All right, so you can only do one of these. That's why I read over here first. I wanted to see if he had that restriction. Uh, and then once he's just six wounds, might as well hit. All right, so each battle round, he can select one of these. At the start of the battle round. So not your command phase. If whoever is going first at the start of the battle round, you choose. All right, so Wreath and Shadows, Aura, Psychic. Well, a friendly Legion Demonic unit is within 6 inches of this model. That unit can only be targeted by ranged attacks if the attacking model is within 18 inches. All right, so he can't be shot outside of 18, and he has stealth. And anybody near within 6 of him... And it's within, not wholly within, can't be targeted outside 18 inch range. That's pretty solid for demons. Uh, Pale of Despair, Paul of Despair, Aura Psychic. In the Battleshock step of your opponent's command phase, if an enemy unit that is below its starting strength is within 6 inches of this model, that unit must take a Battleshock test for the purpose of the ability. If this unit has a starting strength of 1, it is considered to be below its starting strength while it has lost one more wounds. All right, so if he's within six inches of an enemy unit, if they've lost any models, they have to take a battle shock test. All right, that's solid. Battle shock comes up a lot. Uh, Shadow Lord, Aura, Psychic. Well, the friendly Legion Demonic units within six inches of this model, you can reroll battle shock and leadership test taken for that unit. All right, so it gives models near him reroll battle shock. All right, so. His, like, damage profile isn't nearly as nice as the Keeper of Secrets, 
But all these other abilities make him... I mean, mostly his points, but that's almost a must-take and a deep must. You can deep strike anywhere near him, and you can come in a lot closer to, like, have six-inch charges. Then he can, then he can you know, make you harder to hit. He's harder to hit. He's got stealth. Uh, all right. Bellacor, like, really liking the two greater demons they showed us. I'm assuming he's a... Is Bellacor technically a greater demon? I know he's a greater demon, but... Is Bellacor considered a greater demon because he doesn't serve a specific god? Well, anyway, Bellacor and the Keeper's Secrets are pretty solid. All right, they're going to give us Weapon Spotlight, the Bioblade. Looks like it's going to be on the uh, Great Unclean one, at least, if not on anything else. Uh, has extra attack, so... Basically, it's something that's swung in, in addition to others. Lethal hits, auto-wounding on sixes. Three attacks, two up to hit. Strength six, neg two, two damage. Uh, this is where they're just explaining extra attacks, which we already know from going over the weapon profiles before in the uh, when we did the overall rules. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Slaughter and Carnage. So these are on the uh, Bloodthirster. Uh, strike, Strength eight. Two up to hit, 16, or sorry, 8 attacks, hits on 2, strength 16, neg 4, 6 damage. Alright, that's pretty dang solid. And then the sweep is 16 attacks, weapon skill 2, strength 8, neg 1, 2 damage. Alright, so they basically strength and attack swap when you want to do sweep versus strike. Hits on 2s all the time. Uh, neg 4 to neg 1, 6 damage to 2 damage. That's pretty, I mean, he's a bloodthirster. He should hit pretty hard. Uh, stratagem, Corrupt Real Space. Use at the start of your command phase one legion amount of unit from your army that's within range of an objective marker you control. That objective marker is said to be corrupted. It remains under your control even if you have no models within range of it until your opponent controls it at the start or end of any turn. In addition, while an objective marker is corrupted and under your control, the area of the battlefield within six inches of the objective marker is considered to be within your army's shadow of chaos. Oh, that's nice. All right, so someone's pushing the enemy unit up towards you. You, uh, to threaten your objective, you pop this. You can back your, if you got a little weak unit off to auto-hold it, drop a, or not to auto, off of it to their, to protect them, do something else with them. The objective becomes sticky, it's now Shadow of Chaos. You can drop if they're not fully, if the enemy unit isn't on the objective, like if there's a couple inches away, you can drop a unit on the objective, six inches from the enemy, charge in, kill them, possibly pile towards the enemy's line, making them have to fight through that unit to get to the objective, but you're technically still holding that objective because you stickied it. Now, you have to have a unit survive through a turn onto the objective because it's at your command phase. So, you put a unit on it and they get shot off it. You can't do this. So, you have to put something there that is hidden and can survive or tough enough to have a model, at least one model survive to be able to pull this off. But, uh, and then they, they can't, if they can't take a lot of damage, it fell a battle shock because then you can't put this on, uh, you can't use strategies on a unit that fails battle shock. So if you pull it off, this could be real useful, but uh, you have to be able to get to and survive on the objective and not fill your battle shot. Uh, so really liking the characters they showed us. The demon rules seem pretty good. That Shadow of Chaos, if you pull it off, can be huge. Dropping in and getting 6-inch charges instead of 9-inch charges. Uh, especially with some of these characters and stuff they're showing us that have... Pretty good attacks. Uh, that's cool. You could even uh, say you popped that strat and you had Bellicor in reserve. Drop Bellicor in just in the six inches, and then he expands that six inches from him, another six inches out from on the other side of him from that objective, and then you bring something else in off that. Yeah, there's some real plays here. I really like the demons. That is one of my favorite faction focuses I've seen so far. Them and the Thousand Suns both are 
solid, so Chaos players should be pretty excited. Uh, but then we're going to uh, roll into the Sisters. So now we're going to do the Sisters faction focus. Oh, she does not look happy. Uh, Alright, so let's see what they give us for the Sisters here. Uh, now that they're plastic, it's uh, good to see, like in the last couple of years, see a lot more Sisters. They used to be super niche. And you'd only see, like, we only had, like, one guy you'd see at every fifth tournament played Sisters. Now, they're actually something you see on a more regular basis, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, Acts of Faith, as always, is their army rule. Uh, so, if your army faction is Adeptus Sororitas, each unit from your army with this ability can perform one Act of Faith per phase. This is done using Miracle Dice. Right, so each unit can only do it once per phase. If your army faction is Adeptus Swords, you gain one Miracle Dice at the start of each turn. Each time Adeptus Swords unit from your army is destroyed. Alright, so it looks like it's a lot more limited on how they gain them now. Uh, each time you gain a Miracle Dice, roll 1d6. The number you roll is the value of that Miracle Dice. This value cannot be changed or re-rolled unless a roll specifically states otherwise. Keep your Miracle Dice to one side. This is your Miracle Dice pool. All right, that's, I believe, is exactly how you did it before. All right, uh, performing an act of faith. Before making a dice roll for a model or unit from your army with the act of faith ability, if you have one or more dice in your Miracle Dice pool, that unit can perform an act of faith. If it does, select one of the dice from your Miracle Dice pool to substitute that dice roll. All right, so it's before you make the roll. If your roll involves more than one dice, a charge, or a battle shock, only a single dice can be substituted. All right. That dice that is being substituted is not rolled. Instead, the value of the selected Miracle Dice is used as if it had been rolled. This counts as an unmodified dice roll on the value for all rules purposes. Uh, each... I'm recording. Stop banging on the door. All right, sorry about that. Uh, Battle script, the only single dice can be substituted. The dice that is being substituted is not rolled. Instead, the value of the selected mineral dice is used as if it had been rolled. Counts an unmodified dice roll of that value for all rules purposes. Uh, each miracle dice can only be selected for substitution once. Once all miracle dice substitution has been made, remove the chosen miracle dice from your miracle dice pool and roll all remaining unsubstituted dice that are part of the dice roll. You can use a Miracle Dice when a unit performs any an act of faith for any of the following types of dice rolls. Advanced roll, battle shock test, charge roll, damage roll, hit roll, saving throw, wound roll. Alright, so, uh, for my, for, you know me, with the act of faith, if you have one or more dice in your Miracle Pool, that unit can perform an act of faith. It's like one dice. So, an act of faith is selecting one dice. And each unit from your army with ability can perform one per phase. All right, so you can only use one dice per unit per phase. So you're not using multiple dice for this. All right, so Blood of Martyrs. Each time an Adeptus Sororitas model from your army makes an attack, add one to the hit roll if that model's unit is below its starting strength. And add one to the rune roll as well if that model's unit is below half strength. For the purpose of this ability, if a unit has a starting strength of one, it is considered to be low its starting strength while it has lost one or more wounds. Alright. So add one to the hit roll. And add one to the rune roll as well. Oh, so if it's below its starting, so if you've taken any casualties or any wounds of your single model unit, you add one to the hit roll. And if you're below half models or wounds, you get to add one to the wound roll. Okay. So, they just get angrier as they take damage. That's... That sounds like sisters to me. Alright, now here they're giving us the Triumph of St. Catherine. Uh, it's a really cool model. Uh, six inch move. Toughness three. Three up save. Eighteen wounds. Leadership six. Objective control six. Alright, that's solid. I mean, eighteen wounds on a sister. Toughness three though, so it's probably going to be the lowest toughness you ever see on an eighteen wound model. 
Uh, ranged weapon, bolt pistols, 12 inch range, 6 attacks, hits on 2, strength 4, AP 0, 1 damage. Melee weapon, relic weapons, uh, 18 attacks, weapon skill 2, strength 5, neg 2, 1 damage. Okay, that's solid. Uh, leader, so going to be joining units, act of faith. Uh, relics of the Matriarchs. At the start of the battle round, select up to two abilities in the Relic of the Matriarch section. See left. Until the start of the next battle round, this bottle has those abilities. All right, so he gets to choose two out of six instead of one out of three, like uh, some of the other stuff we've seen. Uh, once he's down to five, the attacks of all his weapons are halved, and he can only select one ability using the Relics instead of two. All right, so his, he doesn't get neg one to hit like most people do. He just halves his attacks and loses one of his abilities. Alright, so you get to choose two of these at the start of the battle round, so let's see. Fiery Heart is an aura. While a friendly Adeptus Swordist unit is within six inches of this model, if that unit is destroyed, the Miracle Dice you gain as a result is automatically a six. Sensor of the Sacred Rose, aura. While a friendly Adeptus Swordist unit is within six inches of this model, improve that unit's lead to characters by six. Alright, so plus one leadership. Uh... Oh, auto, see, I just read it and didn't process it. So if a unit's destroyed within six of him, auto get a six on the Miracle Dice. All right, so that's useful. Uh, Simacrellum of the Ibn Chalice. While a friendly directive source unit within six inches of this model, that unit can perform any number of acts of faith per phase instead of only one. Oh, so if they're within six inches of him, they can sacrifice all their attacks or all their wounds for Miracle Dice. Okay, that's... Could be solid on your go turn with a key unit. Uh, Simacrolum of the Ancient Shroud. While a friendly Adeptus Shroudist unit is within 6 inches of this model, add one to the attack characteristic of rapid fire weapons equipped by models in that unit. Uh, Sisters use a lot of bolters, so plus one attack on their bolters isn't horrible. Icon of the Valor's Heart Aura. While the friendly Adeptus Shroudist unit is within 6 inches of this model, unit has a feel no pain 6 plus ability. Alright, that's alright. Uh, well, a friendly Adeptus Swords unit within six inches of this model, melee weapons equip the model in the unit have a lethal hits ability. All right, so six is to hit auto wound. All right, none of these seem ridiculously broken or overpowered, but you get to use two each turn, so that's fine, because if they were too strong, that would be a little too much from we see there. So far, they're keeping power level down on stuff so far, so that's solid. Two slight buffs, better than one medium buff, I think. Uh, all right, and then they're giving us a unit of battle sisters. Six inch move, toughness three, three up save, one wound, leave seven, I'm desperate two. Nothing shocking there. Uh, Artificer crafted storm bolter. All right, rapid fire two, 24 inch range, uh, two attacks or four at 12. Uh, three up to hit, strength four, AP zero, two damage. Bolt pistol, uh, hits on threes, uh, strength four, one damage, one attack. Uh, bolt gun, rapid fire one, uh, 24 inches, one attack, two at 12, hits on three, strength for AP zero, one damage. Uh, heavy bolter, heavy, sustained hits one, a 36 inch range, uh, three attacks. If you get a six to hit, you'll get an extra hit. Uh, hits on fours, unless you stay stationary, because a heavy, you'll get hits on threes. Strength five, neg one, two damage. Uh, melt a gun, melt a two, 12 inch range, one attack, three to hit, strength nine, neg four, D6, you'll get an extra. Two damage within six inches. Uh, I'm in a storm flamer. Uh, ignores cover torrent. 12 inch range. D6 shots. Auto hits. Strength 5. AP 0. 1 damage. Heavy from storm heavy flamer. Ignores cover torrent. 12 inch range. D6 shots. Auto hits. Strength 6. Neg 1. 1 damage. So heavy just gives you plus 1 strength. Plus 1 AP. Uh, multi melta heavy. Melta 2. Uh, 18 inch range. Uh, Two attacks, hits on fours, three if you stay stationary. Strength nine, neg four, d6. Uh, damage, uh, plus two if you're within nine. Melee weapon, chain sword, three attacks, hits on four, strength three if you zero, one damage. Close combat weapon, one attack, strength four, sorry, weapon skill four, strength three, AP zero, one damage. And then the power weapon, two attacks, hits on fours, strength four, neg two, one damage. Huh? It's alright. I mean, it's your generic troop squad, battle line squad, so nothing ridiculously crazy there, but solid, useful. 
Uh, once per battle, after this unit has performed an act of faith, you gain one miracle dice. All right, so that's cool. So they can uh, pop a miracle dice, and then you automatically gain one right back. Uh, which would potentially be for... And the nice thing is, oh, you need to hit. You don't have, like, any good miracle dice. Well, you just use up a three or something and hope you get a better one back. Uh, place a tier up token next to the unit. All right. Uh, Defenders of the Face, at the end of your command phase, for each deck to mark control that has one or more units from your army with this ability to arrange it, you gain a Miracle Dice. Alright, so if they are controlling the objective at the end of your command phase, not only do you score points for the primary, you will gain Miracle Dice. Alright, so you're going to want to have a couple of these squads in, probably. Uh, we don't have the backs, so we don't know if they're coming in fives or tens. If you can take them in little five-man squads, that would be great. Uh, War Gear, Simacrellum and Paralis. Each time a unit... Each time a unit is destroyed by the bearer's unit, you gain one miracle dice. All right, so if they kill a unit, you gain miracle dice. Right, so they're just helping you gain miracle dice. So you definitely want a couple of these units holding your objectives and possibly killing off the last model in units that you whittle down with other stuff. Uh, weapon Spotlight, what are they giving us? Oh, the Exorcist Conflagration Rockets. Blast, heavy, ignores cover, and indirect fire. I've noticed that on a couple indirect fire things. We've seen they give ignores cover because indirect fire if you're shooting out a light automatically gives people cover even if they're not in it so some of these are just auto taking that away right away uh, 36 inch range 3d6 shots blast so if you're shooting into big units you're gonna be getting a bunch of shots uh, hits on threes strength five ap zero one damage uh and then the extra the missile launcher, heavy, indirect fire, was this heavy as well? Yeah, heavy. So if you're stationary, you'll be hitting on twos. Same with this one. If you're stationary, hitting on twos. A 36 inch range, D6 plus two shots. Strength 10, neg two, D6. All right, so this one does not ignore cover. So they will, if you don't see them, if you're shooting out of line of sight, they basically you're only going to be AP1. Uh, then the indirect, we went over this uh, with the other thing, but we'll just go over it. Real quick here, indirect fire weapons can be made with even this target not visible, the attacking model. I can destroy models you can't see. If no models are visible to the attacking unit, when you select the target, each time on the attacking unit makes the attack against the target using the indirect fire weapons, subtract one from the hit roll, and the target has the benefit of cover against the attack. Alright, so if you move with your things, you're going to be hitting on fours. If you're stationary, you'll be hitting on threes because the heavy bonus will take away. The indirect negative. All right, so you're never going to be hitting on twos with these things unless you're shooting direct. If you shoot direct and stay stationary, you'll be hitting on twos. So it has indirect fire, but still, if you can see something, you'll definitely be hitting better. Uh, oh, and then we get the Lance of Illumination. So two type, two type strike and sweep. So strike is devastating wounds. So six is the wound with mortals. Five attacks. Weapon skill two. Uh, strength 8, neg 2, 3 damage. Uh, that's solid. And then sweep is 10 attacks, hits on 2, strength 5, neg 1, 1 damage. Alright, that's a pretty solid weapon. Uh, and then they're giving us a stratagem here. Rejoice the Fallen. Your opponent shooting things just after any unit has resolved its attack. When Adeptus roared his unit from your army that had one or more of its models destroyed as a result of attacking units' attacks. Your unit can shoot as if it were your shooting phase, but it must target only that enemy unit when doing so, and only do so if that enemy unit is an eligible target. All right, so someone shoots you, kills a model, model or two in your unit, uh, and you immediately can shoot back. I'm assuming you're not going to use it if they really kill a lot of models in your unit, because you just won't have enough shooting back to be worth it, maybe. But, and it's not limited to infantry, so if you have those little... Uh, Walker bot things. I can't remember what they're called. Top of my head. And you lose one of those. The rest of that unit could shoot back. That could be pretty solid. Uh, all right. I'm liking the sisters. I, I mean, most of these faction focuses, I really like. Nothing seems super broken. Nothing seems super weak. Like, everything seems in play. I mean, we haven't seen the indexes. So, the, you know, obviously they're not going to show us the stuff with the worst rules in the faction focuses because they want to get us excited. So we'll see how the indexes balance out, balance out. But the faction focuses, a couple of them seem slightly stronger, but without the indexes, it's really hard to really tell. But nothing has seemed like 
super overwhelming strong over everything else. But, uh, all right, that's where we're going to end this one. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, catch you with the next one.